All right, so the next definition uh, we want to introduce is this word cardinality. Cardinality essentially refers to the size of a set, like the number of elements in it. You can have finite cardinalities, and you can also have infinite cardinalities with sets that have an infinite, infinitely many elements. And there's different types of infinite cardinality, which is when you hear people talk about like different levels of infinity, uh, cardinality is one of the ways in which you can discuss different levels of infinity. And we're going to do that in a later section. But for now, let's just define a finite set with cardinality uh, an n. So if a set has exactly n different or distinct elements for some natural number n, then it is a finite set with cardinality n. So natural numbers are possible cardinalities. You can't have like a negative cardinality, and you can't have a cardinality which is a fraction. That doesn't make sense. You can't have two and a half elements or whatever. Um, now the notation for this is uh, you can write... Um, like, if the set is called A, you can write, like, absolute value symbols around A. This absolute value idea is sometimes used to, note, to denote the idea of magnitude. Like, if you've done anything with vectors in, like, a physics class or a calculus, multivariable calculus, um, you may remember that absolute value is used to talk about the length of a vector, because that's kind of like its magnitude. Well, the magnitude of a set is, the, is its size, right? That would be the number of elements in it. So we use absolute value to talk about the size of a set, then that, its cardinality. Let's go over an example. Okay, so let's say the set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, and 8, all right? Now, I'm writing those in order, but you know, it, the order doesn't matter. Anyway, those are the elements. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four. That's got four elements in it, so I could write the cardinality of A equals four. Now the fact that four happens to be an element of that is totally just coincidence, right? If I had another set B and it was like uh, blue, square, Tristan, and um, this squiggle thing, right? If that's, sorry, brace. If that was my set, then it's still got four elements in it, right? There's ridiculous elements, but that's okay. I would still say the cardinality of that is four, because it's four things. Um, a few other examples. Uh, the cardinality of the empty set, I bet you can guess what that is. It's zero. It's the only set that has zero elements in it, and it's unique. Um, and then, uh, so I, I, did, I did mention we're going to talk about infinite cardinalities a little later. Um, the integers, it's an example of uh, an infinite set, and its cardinality actually um, is a special number. It's called, this is Aleph Null. That is the, Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and Aleph Null, which is like subscript zero, um, is the smallest infinite cardinal number, which is the smallest possible infinite cardinality, uh, and that is the size of the integers, also the size of the natural numbers, but we'll go over all that later. So, okay, so um, there's cardinality. Now, I also want to, in this video, introduce another idea, which is the power set. So, a power set is something you do, some, some way of, like, making a new set from an old set. So the power set of another set S is a new set, which is um, the set of all subsets of the set S. Like every possible subset you could create by taking some elements of S um, is, uh, is itself an element of this thing called the power set. And there's notation for this, which is uh, basically this kind of fancy curly P of S. So you kind of the P is kind of like a function that you apply to the set S, which takes that set and it produces a new set out of it. Let's go over an example. So let's use the set. I'm going to use the letter A again, although this is going to be a different A, not the same as that one. Uh, I just want to make make a really small set. Let's just take the set um, X Y. All right. So the if 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 A is X Y, then the power set of A is going to be the following set. It's going to have all the subsets of A. Now, remember, in a, in a theorem, let's see if I can find it. Where's the theorem? Here we go. In this theorem here, we said for any set A, uh, the empty set is, an, is a subset, and the entire set itself is a subset, right? So um, the simplest possible subset we could have here uh, is the empty set. So the empty set will be an element of the power set, OK? The empty set is a subset of A, but it's an element of the power set of A. 
uh, it's the simplest one. And then we can have some, we can create some singleton sets. So any singleton set that's possible, uh, we could put that in here. Um, so that's taking one set at the, one element at a time. We have the set containing X and the set containing Y. Uh, and then we could start combining two elements at a time. And then if there were more elements, we could do all the ways of taking three elements at a time and all the different ways of taking four elements at a time and so on until we build up to the entire set. So um, in this case, after we take X and Y together, that is already the entire set, and so then we're done. So that's a nice small one, okay? Um, and that is the entire power set right there. So let's make a couple of notes about this. Um, so note here that X is an element of A, but X is not an element of the power set of A. Instead, we have the set containing X which is an element of the power set of A. So I kind of already made this point um, earlier uh, when I was talking about subsets, but here it is kind of making the same point in terms of, uh, in terms of the power set here. Um, uh, another point, um, if uh, the cardinality of S is finite, right? If it's equal to N for some natural number N, uh, then what we can say is that when we'll be able to tell uh, what the power set Sorry, what the, the cardinality of the power set of S is going to be. It was meant to be an S there. So saying here, if S is a finite set with cardinality N, all right, then how big is the power set going to be? All right, see if you can pause the video and figure that out before I say what the answer is, okay? Now, I'm going to explain a little bit before I say the answer. Um, first of all, let's look at this example. When we had two elements, right? When this set A had two elements in it, our power set had one, two, three, four elements, okay? It had, um, uh, you know, all the ways of doing none of them, plus all the ways of doing one of them, plus all the ways of doing two of them, all right? Uh, we haven't learned a lot about counting yet, but later we're going to learn a little bit about counting. We're going to learn something called the multiplication rule for counting. Um, and it's sort of like if you have a sequence of choices you need to make, then you can count the number of different ways of making all those choices by just multiplying the number of choices together for all the, for all the choices you're making. So in this case, you can think of it like for every element in this set, then what we're going to do is choose either to put it in a subset or not put it in a subset. And all of the different ways of combining those choices together will produce all of the different possible subsets. So really what it's going to be is two options either in the subset or not in the subset, raised to a power of the number of different elements. So the answer here is two to the power n. So um, the size of a, a power set grows exponentially uh, with the number of elements in the set. Okay. Now, um, I wanna do one more example at the bottom here. I'm gonna see if I can squeeze it in right at the bottom. Should have a little bit of space. Uh, let's start with the empty set, okay, which has nothing in it. Now, what, I ask, is the power set of the empty set? Well, how many subsets does the empty set have? Well, going back to that theorem, right, every set uh, has the empty set and itself. And so um, this is going to have uh, one subset, right? The empty set has one subset, which is just itself. Um, so the power set of the empty set is a set containing the empty set. Now that's different from the empty set itself. These are different things. So what you can do, and this is just for sort of fun and to, to like challenge your mind and kind of give you ideas here. What you can do is you can then take the power set of the power set of the empty set. Okay. Um, and so we have the empty set. We have the set containing the empty set. And now what's the power set of that? Well, it's the power set of the set containing the empty set, which is going to have, well, it's going to have two different things in it because the empty set is a subset of this, okay? But the other subset is a singleton containing the empty set, like so. And these are different things, right? You've got the empty set and the set containing the empty set, which are different. Uh, and then, etc. You could take the power set of the power set of the power set of the empty set and then see what happens with that. And so that's kind of a fun exercise just to kind of like wrap your head around what the empty set is, what power sets are, and to really get this idea of, okay, a set containing something is different than the thing itself. Um, we're going to do a little more of that in the next video.